Welcome back. Today we're going to tie, as I say frequently, one of my favorite flies ever. This truly is up there. For me, all the guides, uh, day in, day out, for probably since this fly was put out, as far as sheer numbers go, this is our go-to fly. I mean, this is, I'm going to have, if I could have three flies, it, this would be one. The olive painted envy and probably sex dungeon be, you know, right in there, be the three of it. When things are tough, man, this is one of my go-to bugs. This is just the, this is the numbers builder. This is the one where you build your confidence. This all flies, all fish. I mean, this, they just clobber this thing. And so there's a couple of things about it that changed throughout, you know, since I started it. I first did it, I did it, used a little bit shorter shank hook. Uh, I'm going to tie this one uh, using the MFC's uh, 7050s, the ring eye hooks. Um, that's kind of how we standardized it. We usually, usually we do the same size hook, a four and a four, or a, a you know, a two and a two. On this one, I'm going to do a four and a two because that's how I do my own, uh, just so I can compensate for this loss up here from the having the cone head up there, just kind of, it gives me just a little bit more, gives you another, another eye, basically. Like I said, on my first ones, and, and don't be afraid to change these up, because the first ones I did uh, were on an 80-89 short shank stinger hook on the front hook, and I used uh, tungsten beads then. Uh, and I still do a few of my own with tungsten beads. I'm going to use a brass cone head on this, because that's kind of where we landed with this one. But on the original, like I said, I used an 889 on the front hook. Uh, same thing on the back, a ring eye, four or six. And then I, I moved over to the B10Ss on that. I like that gap a little bit, and, and so a little bit better. But don't be afraid to swing you know, around one way or the other just to see which one you like. The thing about this fly that I really like is its simplicity. It has two things that I really dig. First and foremost, it's simple. Simple flies hunt. That's just bottom line. Simple, it's just, mar and the second thing is it's got marabou in it. Marabou has soul. I dig marabou, I've got it in virtually, uh, I think every streamer I've got, I've got marabou in it somewhere. I just don't think there's any synthetic on earth that can compare to it. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a real basic bait fish pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a, a size 6, or excuse me, size 4, 70, 50. These are new hooks, by the way. These are... They're basically just a takeoff of the uh, it's MFC's version of the uh, 2460s or 2461s which I tie a lot with. And so I'm using the, the uh, GSP 100 on this one. And this is, I'm going to start this thread right, right in the middle of the hook. And you do that, for those of you who have watched, for those of you that tell me that I talk too much in these videos, you're right, but I don't really care. We're here to learn stuff. Not everybody knows everything. So I start my thread for a purpose. I don't start it at the front of the hook and go back. You'll see, all that. You'll see that a lot. You start it there and go back. Use your thread as a gauge. Put it right here dead center. I'm going to break this. This is a stacked fly. It has three stacks of marabou in it. We're going to have the tail. We're going to have the, the middle one and the front one. So you can see that right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's just three stacks on this fly. So... As with everything, this is marabou. It's a natural, and you've heard, anybody that's ever watched any of my videos knows, I say this over and over, you have to cull your marabou. You, you're gonna get one third drop if you're lucky. To get a 50% drop is not uncommon. Um, and so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put the white one on first, and I'm gonna show you something, and I'm, I'm really embarrassed about this, and to whomever I'm embarrassing, I will find your name before. <laughs> before I post this, if I can. But I had a friend send me in this, this tool. Because if you've ever watched my videos, and I've talked about don't lick marabou because it make you crazy like Johnny, it's, it's got a lot of, it's got carcinogens in it. You shouldn't put this stuff in your mouth. And this guy sends me this, this is maybe the, the, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Just took one of these little, you know, fly cups and put a sponge in this thing. Right? Put a piece of Velcro on the bottom so it sits on your table like this. So instead of being like Johnny, putting this in your mouth, you come over here and you do that. <laughs> that is the greatest idea I've ever seen. No more of this stuff. It puts a piece of Velcro on it. It closes. I've had this thing closed for two weeks, and it was still really pretty damp when I first picked it up. 
And I so, I, I really apologize. I have the piece of paper that you sent me. I'm going to try to find it. I'm sure you'll see it and call me, but uh, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So anyway, back to this fly. We're going to take the feather. Don't put that in your mouth. Put this feather and we're going to make it the same length as the hook. We do that with every stack, right? So on the first stack, I mean, not, not both of these. So we come in here, get the length of the hook, transfer your hand. We're going to do a... Uh, Pinch wrap here, a set, and an anchor. We're done. We're going to move forward just slightly. Not quite to that halfway point. All right. Nice and tight. Hold your materials. Hold them so that when they first start, so they cannot spin. Just reef on that thing, but make sure you keep your finger, your thumb and your forefinger there. Now we're going to take, this will even get harder because I've worked through this olive like crazy. This is a this is getting kind of beat up piece. So we're just looking for the ones that have a nice plume all the way to the tip. So when you go like this, the edges, you can, I've got a video on how to select marabou, but just so they're all the same length. So we're going to take our handy little thing over here, our sponge. I'm going to set this one dead on top, right over top, just like we did before. Single set. Make sure you're setting in the same spot. Come forward, nice and tight, end it right before that half. I'm not all the way up to the halfway point. Now we just come back. Now we're going to take our, this is uh, cactus chenille medium pearl. And I'm just going to show you a super, super, super simple thing here. On these bags, if you keep your stuff, if you keep it, I don't know what I did with it, if you keep this stuff, in the bag like this and you pull it out. Two things, if you have the room, I did this in one of my old fly tying rooms. Um, when, I, when I was way back when I was in Michigan, my buddy Jerry Wilson called it the room of plenty because it had everything you can imagine in it. But I had the wall behind me. It's, a, it's just a, a simple trick if you have the room. Hang your chenilles, this kind of stuff. Get it, just put a nail up or whatever you want to do. Let it hang all straight down so it's like this long and take all the kinks out of it. But that's not what I was getting to. But this, just like the, this, just like the dubbing dispensers where they have a little hole in the back, if you cut a little hole in this and you can just pull this stuff out, you won't have it all over the place constantly. You know, not have that whole string down. It's pretty easy. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to strip that stuff off. This is a, this is a braid, right? They just take two pieces of cotton thread, wrap it around. It's, it's, it's a, a dubbing brush. Same way you do all of them. And so you cut this off, and we're going to tie on just to these little, these little threads. We're not going to tie the other stuff into it. So that way we get super secure. One, two, three, move forward. Not worrying too much about any of this build. We're going to come right in here and drop a half hitch. Now we're, gonna, we're right back to where we were, right there to that halfway point. And this is now, if you're one of those people that don't like to listen to me talk, but you're still watching this, this is where after we finish this, you could fast forward right to the front because it's the same three steps and then three more in front of it. So, with all materials, we're going to take this first wrap. We're going to get one complete wrap around here. And I want you to look at your materials and then your, your chenille. I want you to see. Is my hand in the way of that? You're good. Okay, I want you to watch how, I, I hold it here, but then I want you to watch how that stretches. It's, you can stretch this a, a third to a quarter of its length, and that's your anchor. It just like locks in. And so then I'm going to try, I know I, I've been watching these videos, and frequently I have my hands in front of it. We're filming from behind here, and I'm, I'm trying not to do it, so it's a little, uh, it's just a little bit awkward to start with here. So just nice, clean, tight wraps forward, and we're, you know, get that out of my way here. I'm gonna I cut my stuff up. I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to waste time to do that. For me to mess with that stuff around behind, even if I'm using a short piece, I still like to just, I like to just cut it off and start, set it off and start. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. It's just, it's just, for me, it's, it's easier than messing with this stuff. It's a lot faster for me to just tie it back in. So now we're just going to repeat this step. <clears throat> Get that there. Now, but this is, this is still going to be the length of the hook. But you're going to have a, a secondary gauge now. 
because what we're gonna do is we're gonna shingle this. We're gonna layer this marabou on the fly. And I'm gonna show you on the, on the olive because it's a lot easier to see. But every time I put one in, I'm gonna go halfway down the back one. I'm not gonna just lay it here, lay it over here. Every one is just like a shingle. So it's right on top. This one's going on the bottom. You won't be able to see it as well on the white. But they just go halfway on each one. It's a layer effect. I really think that makes a difference because when you see the fly wet, it doesn't necessarily like just one color. It's got breaks in it. It just, it looks better. And it's probably a little bit more realistic. So, and in the, in a minnow doesn't have, it's not one color, it's, it's multiple colors. So here we're gonna do the same thing. Three turns, I'm gonna pull it in here. I'm gonna wrap forward the same way I did before. You are bugging me. And so I don't like to cut my stuff off because I'm trying to build a little taper with my body, my materials. And so leave yourself room for the head. Come in here, you see, I just, I just did nice even wraps. My bodies don't move around. I mean, this, you'll see people's flies, and it's kind of a, it, it's a telltale that you're not really working this right. If, if you grab these bodies and they roll on you, you just didn't get these things tight, and you just, you rush the fly. So each one of these, same thing, I'm doing one and one, and you'll see when I get to the front, I'll start using more marabou. And on the back three, I use the same amount. I use one, 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 one feather, and one feather. When I get to the front hook, I'll, I'll use more. So again, we're gonna go halfway up right here into that feather. You've got it wet so you can work with it. They dry out quick, so there's your pinch. Oops, kind of sloppy. Two, there's your set right on top. That'll all get nice and fuzzy when we dries out a little bit. If you work with dry marabou, you're going to It'll be, it's hard to work, but there's fuzzy stuff everywhere. Same thing, two, three. So you guys can call in and tell me to speed this up and, and work faster. You're going to make me nervous. Not really. <clears throat> so, first one, always one full set. Pull really hard. Perfect. <laughs> quality set here. Dog attack. That's Johnny in the back room there. Making trouble as always. Okay, I've left nice, a, a lot of space here for the head. Came in here. You cut those off and I cut off a little long and then I just try to catch just those threads. That was a little long actually. Whining dogs. It's funny when you do these videos, you've always got your your likers and your haters. Some people love the dogs. Some people really hate the dogs. <laughs> uh, it's a new world out there. Got enough of that. Okay, now, same thing. Just gonna, we're just going to layer this. We're going to stack it. So this one's going to go halfway, halfway back. Set, or a pinch I mean. Set and an anchor. Nothing takes more than three. Just going to come in here. Get an olive one. This is really not that, it's, it's a pretty quick fly as articulated flies go because steps are so simple that it's not like, even though, even though there's three sets on this thing, it, it goes really quick. I look for, and as I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use three, but every time I look for one, if you noticed, this one was about the same diameter as that, same thickness. This one's gonna be the thickest one I can find. I want these to get progressively thicker as I go forward. And so that's going to go right on there, halfway mark, pinch, set, and anchor. 
a little sloppy on that. Messed up on the bottom of that ply right there. I did a little cleanup on aisle one there. Oh, Mr. Barking Dog's back. Okay, so now we got three stacks here, top and bottom. We're gonna transfer. We're gonna go to a size two on the front hook. I'm taking a size large brass. Cone head. We're going to slide that on. So, when you do, I saw something, I forget what, I think it was on, a, I don't know, I think it was an Instagram thing, I don't know. And I didn't do it on this, and I really haven't tried it, but I thought it was a great idea because uh, these things kind of wobble around and you're trying to, you know, build it up and get there. and you can't really build it up first and bring it over. I guess you could. You could do the thread. This guy puts his cone on, puts a bead on, slides it up in there, and glues it. And thinks sits perfect. I mean, I haven't tried it yet. Probably should right now. Uh, I'm not going to. But it's kind of a cool idea. So you just set all this space in the back. You run your bead up in there. Then you start your thread, and it kind of just pushes it forward and keeps that thing really clean. It's a great idea. What would you say? Try it? Try it. I guess. Good idea. I just thought of that. They say that old people's brains go away. It's true, but if I could find a bead, do a black piece. It's a great idea. Let's see if it works. I don't know, it's a pretty big hook for that bead. Might not be able to get this little bead over it. Yep, I did. All right, total ad lib there, sorry. So, this guy's idea, put the bead on. Ooh. Well, look at that, mister. That worked pretty damn well. <laughs> uh, put the bead on. <laughs> wow, first time. Okay, pretty cool idea. I don't know where I saw it, but uh, thank you to whoever did that. That's, that's pretty cool. So, we're going to make sure, just like always, you stop your thread so it's hanging at the gouge. We're going to take a piece of just 17 pound surflon, um, which you see here. Stop that. Find that little baby hook. Just wrap this over. Now, with this one, normally, on my flies, I go through the eye of the hook and back, especially on my bigger flies. I don't do that with this one. Just give it a little pull. And we're going to set this on the side. I don't put a bead on this one. We keep this one relatively close. Uh, the beads originally were to stop you from getting the what was called the skirt hung up in the... We used to, when we put flashaboo on these, and we would it would get hung up in there. And we start, That's why we originally did that. So now we're just going to put nice, tight, tight, tight wraps. And I can't, I mean, you'll, you'll never pull one of these out. But if you do a fast, just sloppy run forward and don't take your time and really send she's down, it probably will pull out. So usually I would have enough to go underneath here, but because of this guy's, hey, scissors. Because of this guy's new invention, whoever you are, thank you. I, don't, I think I saw it on, I think it was an Instagram thing, I don't remember. So, now, <clears throat> I'm going to just give this a, a, a little bit of zap, and we've tried to pull these things off after we've zapped them. I don't think you could do it. I really don't. There's not a trout that I've ever seen that you that would pull this off. You almost always get in the front hook anyway, but let it set just a little bit, then give it a nice set of really tight wraps coming back, and you'll be golden. Thread's hanging right where it belongs at the back. Now we're simply going to 
proceed. This first one, I put a single, a single plume on. The second one, I'm going to look for a really thick plume if I can get one. And the third one, if I can't find a, an even thicker one, I'll double that one up. But I'm, I'm looking for stack here. So you have to be able to see your marabou on the bottom. I mean, this isn't a big... If you, if you don't go exactly halfway, I don't think the fish is going to just run away. It, it, you know, it's just kind of a try to get things right as you go. Don't over marabou these, though. Don't double them up all the way. That, that, it's that... The beauty of the marabou is the way this thing just undulates. It's like a... Well, it's going to say pole dancer, but you know, it's like a... It just does weird things, right? And if you get too much, it kind of, the more there is, it just it slows that down. So basically on this one, you know what, I kind of got ahead of myself there, I'm sorry. I gotta show you something. On this one, I'm gonna show you how I, I just think it's easier if you double these up. On the back one, I was kind of ahead of myself there. My bad. Take two of these, a little extra glue on me. Take two of these, come on the halfway point, just like you'd always do, and tie this one in on the back, and just roll it under like that. Nice set. Now take your other one, and again, you saw me, I was, I was by habit, I was pulling off the marabou, making these thinner, because, kind of like that's a habit, put that in my mouth. And so, what you do is you, you set them so they're at the halfway point, just, it's really hard to get one to split this. So you just take a single, take one on each side, just get them kind of thin, roll them under, and just set it. And just work forward. I like to leave the stuff in there. I'm building a taper. I'm going to the halfway point, just shy of halfway with the marabou. So right there is going to be the, the, I'm leaving room to get the body built in there. And then on the top one, you can, because you don't have to split the hook, this one you can just do a, a, a really nice heavy plume of one plume. There are those people that are efficient enough, efficient enough to sit down while they're watching football or, in Johnny's case, it would be the Kardashians. Uh, and they pluck these things all out and them in advance and get them all sorted. That's the time save. Everybody wants to know how to tie fast. You know, you, if you tie fast by having your materials prepped and ready to go and doing things the same way every time. But hey, Johnny digs a Kardashian, so that's all right with me. Looking for a pretty thick plume here, so I like to have a nice cover on this back. That thing's really quite handy. So same thing here, I want this to layer halfway, just halfway over that back feather. Pinch, set, anchor, come forward just far enough to the halfway point. Back. Strip the ends of this off right here so you're just tying on with that little tiny piece. Set. Move. Whoops. Get over there. I can't believe how good that bead's working. <laughs> this thing's always just drives you out of your mind. It just. Okay. Some thinkers out there. Okay, get one full turn around there. That's one full one. Get in here, set that really tight. Nice, just each, I usually go about every fourth one and I pull on this, fifth one maybe, and I just give it a pull. And I'm, now, I'm, now we're up to the front of this fly and we're gonna start making taper. So everything's supposed to get thicker as you go forward. And that's what we're gonna, I'm gonna make a little bit more a little bit heavier body. I'm going to do this the way that you want to do it, leaving it on there this time just to speed things up. 
for you a little bit. I'm looking for a nice, this is my middle one. So this is, should be progressively thicker. So I'm looking for one that's just got, a, I mean, it's a really heavy plumed marabou right here. I pull it up from the sides. These are still just a little short. I can only get away with so much. You cannot tie this whole thing in. If you tie all that marabou in, when you go like this, and these side ones are down here and they're short, it's, it's just gonna, it's gonna stop your marabou from just undulating the way it's supposed to. So don't, there's no shortcut for getting this right. Mm -mm -mm. Don't put that in your mouth. By the way, the white is also, the white is also a dyed product. So I'm just looking here to see where the halfway point is. I'm gonna pinch it, set it, anchor it, and move forward building bulk into the fly, progressively making it thicker as we go forward. This one I'm gonna to try to butt so it gets right up next to that bead. By the way, I told you earlier when I did the, uh, the ones with the B10S, I did not do three stacks on that, I did two. I did one right here and then one right at the head. It was, uh, it was just, it's a shorter hook. You know, you're not you're not looking for as much body. All right. Chicken plucking factory. I say I say son, that ain't no chicken. All right. That's an old cartoon. None of you'll understand any of it. All right. Some of you will. We're gonna go in here. So there's my marabou. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna stack this one halfway back, just like that. Had a little roll right there. Don't let that happen. I rolled off to the side. Don't let that happen to you. Nice even pressure. This one I'm going to work right into that eye. Just, that's so this same thing on the same one on this when you do this. Grab your material. Don't, don't just pull on it because it's going to roll stuff around if you don't have it perfectly set. Set it, pinch it, let it sink in. And now I'm going to go forward and I'm going to, I wrapped over that. Fourth one, I'm going to give it a pull. I'm going to build up. I'm going to go back and forth once on this. I just wanted, uh, sloppy. I'm going to come back in here, give it just one extra turn. I'm just building just a little tiny bit of bulk. And then we're going to go right into this. I mean, I got to tell you that there's a, the last step we do with this with the crystal minnow or the ice dub minnow belly. With the way this works now, because before that stuff would all go under, it kept wanting to go forward into the bead. You may be able to skip a step. I'm going to still put it on there because I've always done it. But I always put my white one on first, by the way. I don't, the bottom one, just. Uh, I just don't trap as much material when I can work from the top down. On the bottom ones, it's easy to trap it. And see, like the, if you put the top one on first, you can set the bottom one and you can have a little white in there, or green in your white. I don't like to do that. This one, I'm uh, probably going to put two on it. I just got to look at it. Pretty thick. I think we'll just hold on this thing though. Okay, we're gonna come in here. Get, ouch, stop that. It's hard to see that. No, I still need another one. I want this this one I I said I have to look at it to see if I get if I get a really clean, 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 thick marabou plume. I'll only use one, but it's got to be like just a superstar. This one's, it's just, it's all right, but it's just got, it's a little thin over there yet. I'm trying to learn to use my sponge and not do that. This one, I'm just going to give it a little extra. 
Same with the top one. Don't worry about those stems. We're going to cover those up with something in a second. Okay. So this is a really nice thick plume. This is a kind of not so thick. I'm going to double this up. Whenever I do this, what I do is this is a this is a superstar. This is a great thick one. This one's just kind of so-so, right? And so I put the so-so one always on the bottom. It's kind of a space builder, and then the top one's going to be the, the true layer that really I see. And again, halfway down here. This one's going to go, I'm going to go, I cut this one just, just a little shorter than I'm going to put this one. This one's just going to be a little bit longer. Just so, it just, it's a stabilizer. One's a little short, it's underneath here, you know, I don't know how to do it. I can't put my hands that way. This one's just going to lay over top, but just a little bit of a layer, it just supports that top and it's going to be really full and really pretty. Now, now we've got... Just this little bit. Now I take a little bit of, because I can't, even with that bead, which is a really superior, that is such a great trick. Uh, with that bead, I'm still gonna, I got this like unfinished business up here. It just, it just, there's this crap here and it just doesn't look finished. So all I do is just take a little bit of, and you can just touch or uh, finger dub this. You don't have to loop it. Um, and we're, and like I said, it's not, this is just a finish. This is, so just give yourself a little bit of dubbing. If you don't want to do this, it wouldn't hurt your fly. But just a little bit of dubbing right there. Just kind of clean up that union. It's pearl ice dub, or minnow belly, I mean. Pearl or minnow, minnow, minnow belly or pearl, either one. And so there, now we've got the stacked. Now this one's thin, you know, this is... This is how I do my own. And the commercial ones, a lot of times, you'll see they'll be a little thicker. This is a little thicker. It's a little different. This is how, I mean, this is, this is the ridge. This is the OG, as Jeremy says. And so, but what you'll see is they're nice, thin stacks. And they taper back. Each one, I wanted to get them wet so you could see them. Each one's got a little bit of a, you know, they just keep, when they lay down, they just layer down. And I think they, that shows up in the water. It's kind of like movement or something. I don't know. All I know is that this fly has accounted on, on, on virtually ever, every river I fish, including down south on the white. And uh, I've had several of the white river guides tell me this is just like a game saver for them. And so it's super simple. It's, it's, it's six steps. That's, I mean, they're just repeating themselves one after another after another. But this is a fly that I think every, and, and by the way, the last two years I had a buddy in Jurassic Lake in, you know, Argentina, number one fly. And so it, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of versatility. Don't be afraid to change the size of the beads or the, or change the cones, I mean, or change just them to beads, shake, you know, shorter shank hooks. It doesn't matter. Just get this, get the premise down, get the layering down, piece of cake. Hope that helps you out.